Hello guys. So welcome to this HTML, CSS and JavaScript basic tutorial. This tutorial is for absolute beginners who have no experience with any of these languages. Just to give you context, HTML, CSS and JavaScript, they are the front end languages and most of the web is created using these three languages. In simple terms, HTML language is used to create text elements, image element and some other structural element for any website front end. CSS is used to stylize or to give some colors, a background and different style to those structured elements. And JavaScript is used to make these websites interactive. We are going to learn all these things step by step in this tutorial. Okay, so let's start with HTML. So first of all, I recommend you to open Notepad, go to your computer and then you can use Notepad. You can use any editor of your choice. In this tutorial, because it is for beginners, we are going to use Notepad. For Mac OS users or anything else, you can use any Notepad editor which is by default available on your computer. The second thing we would need is a web browser. You can use any web browser. I'm going to use Mozilla Firefox. In your case, you're using Safari, Edge browser, Chrome browser or any other browser of your choice which is available on your computer. So you just need two these simple things, a notepad and a browser to work with HTML, CSS and JavaScript. I'll open both things side by side so that whatever we do the code on the left side, we can see the preview on the right side. So notepad, we will need to write the code of HTML, CSS and JavaScript and a browser, we are going to need to see that response. It's like creating a local website on your computer. Okay, so let's write our first HTML code. So if you write in this file, this is a text and then we're gonna select on file and save as index.html and then click on save. And if I minimize this browser, you can see there's a file on my desktop. So now what you can do, you can just double click this file or what else you can do, you can just take this file, drag and drop in your browser. And this file is open here. Let's close all these other tabs. Okay, so you can see this is the code we write and on the right side, this is the response. And guys, congratulations, you just write a code which is almost no code, but still you have created a HTML file successfully. Okay, so if we keep writing code just like this, the thing is going to be very complicated. That's why HTML has some tags defined. For example, you want to write a paragraph, you need to write bracket P and then close it and then we write this is a paragraph and always in the end we're gonna close this tag so these things are called tags for example this is a paragraph tab which is defined by p the same way if you want to write a heading we can write h1 and then close the bracket and then this is a heading and then we'll close the h1 tag so h1 tag means heading tag and now if we save this and we go right side, you can see we have this paragraph here and then we have this heading here. So basically instead of writing everything like this, we remove this text and we write it more organized way like in paragraphs and headings. And always you can click on file and click save and then once you save you can refresh this page and you can see the direct response on the right side. Now you must be thinking why it is h1 not just h because heading starts with h and we are writing h1. In HTML, we have multiple headings. For example, you can write H2 and then we can write this is a another heading. And then like always, we're going to close it. H2, H2 and then finish back. And then we close the back. And if I refresh here, you can see there's another heading. But you notice here, the both headings are bold, but this one is a little bit smaller. And this one is a little bit bigger. So HTML have heading from h1, h2, h3, h4, h5, h6 and they are not just used to display bigger and smaller headings they are also very useful for search engines because when search engine bots they crawl the website pages the content they will find with h1 tag is the most important content on the page and then you have h2 headings which are subheadings for this main content so by using this structure we are not just making our content easy to read but also we are making it easy to read for the bots and for search engines so they can properly read our web page and rank it on google search engine there is another tag which is called button tag for example if i want to add a button i'll just write button start and then close it and then 
you will write click me and then like always you're gonna close this button tag like this and then we're gonna save this file and now we'll refresh you can see it looks just like a text because I have done a small mistake here I have read it done three times so guys make sure you write the correct syntax and obviously they are really easy they make a lot of sense and HTML is the most simple language to learn and anybody can learn it and it's really easy interesting language for anybody even who has no experience in coding okay so once I corrected my mistake now I'm gonna save it again now if I refresh the page you can see we have this button here so you can see all these are different HTML elements and these starting and ends they are called HTML tags which define which element we are using for example for paragraph HTML element we use p tag for heading 1 we use h1 heading 2 h2 and then for button we use button tag so this overall is one HTML element and these one are tags let me show you one more important tag it is called image tag so I start img and then I write src which means source and then I write equals and then single quotes and then I close this tag and now like I told you already what we need to do is we need to close the img tag but not in this case guys in case of the image we don't add the image end tag why because image is a single element you cannot add another element inside the image for example in button you can see we write a text which is click me but the image we cannot insert something inside the image and because of that we do not add the image tag and this is the complete image tag okay now we need to add the image URL here which you want to display here or you can say image address to get an image what I will do I'll just open the Google search engine and we'll take this Google logo from here we'll right click on this logo and we'll click on copy image link and what I will do I'll come back here between these two single quotes and I'll paste the Google image here and then I will save this file I will go back here and then I will refresh this page you can see the image is added here and you might be seeing here I have added this image tag and it's on the right side and the button is on the left side even it looks like it's on the bottom of this image but actually it's on the right of this image on the left is button on the right is image and you can see overall this looks very non-pleasant very chaotic you can see all over doesn't look very nice and it's not aligning so now here comes the requirement of styles we're gonna style this page and we style this page we give some design to this page using CSS and full form of CSS is cascading style sheets in short to make the page beautiful or style we use CSS or cascading style sheets let me give you an example for example if I want to change the color of this heading what I need to do is I'll just click here in the tag and I'll write style equal and then single quotes and I will write color and then colon red and then I will close this and then I save this file now if I refresh you can see the heading is red and if I want to make this heading bigger what I can do after this colon ended I can write font size colon colon and then 48 pixels the more this number is the bigger the text is and then I'll save it and then on the right side I'll refresh it you can see the heading is much bigger so whenever you write the CSS inside the HTML tag it's called inline CSS but this is not the best practice to write a CSS like this so what we'll do we'll add a style tag on the page simply you can write bracket style this and like always I told you we need to close this style there are few elements where you do not need to close the tags but mostly you need to close the tags and just to make it easy I'm just gonna give some space here so we can put the content inside properly so you can see this is style here instead of the style we added the style tag here now if I want to make this heading red instead of code here I can write here h1 and then you can write curly braces and we will end the curly braces and in between I can just copy this thing from here and then I can paste it here and adding CSS like this is called internal CSS this is called inline CSS 
and this is called internal CSS. Don't wait too much about it. Just understand this way is better way of adding CSS onto a page in comparison to this one. So now we have the CSS here. We can remove the CSS from here. So we added the CSS here. And now if I refresh the page, you can see the heading is still red because now the style is added here. If I want, I can just change it to from red to green. And then if I refresh the page, you can see it is green now. And the guys, these tags are not case sensitive. You can write it in any fashion you want. You can make it like uppercase. And if you refresh the page, it's still gonna be green. Instead of H1 like this, you can write it capital H, H1, and you can save the page. Or you can always use Control S on your keyboard. It's much easier to save the page. When I refresh the page, you see, it doesn't make any change. So HTML is not case sensitive, but there is important thing, guys. But if example I mispronounce here, instead of H, I write here H G1, then I save the page. And then I refresh it, you can see it's broken. So make sure guys you're adding the proper tag here. So we'll make it back. I give one more example. Instead of button, in button, in case of double T, I add another T here and I save the page and I refresh the page. You can see the button is gone from here. So guys, make sure you add the correct syntax here. And it is really easy. There's some SEL elements. I'll add the detailed description of these elements in the description of the video. Or I'll add some nice video where you can learn about all these texts. But as a beginner, it is really nice start. You guys know about how to write HTML code and how to write CSS code. And guys, if you're getting any help from this video, I really recommend you. You can like the video and subscribe to the channel. That really helps the channel grow and this kind of nice content to reach many more people. I'll really appreciate, I'll be really happy if you can subscribe to the channel and like this video. And please share this video who wants to learn HTML, CSS or JavaScript. Let's take one more example of CSS. If I want to make this heading in center of the page, what I can do, I can just add another CSS property here. To make it more readable, usually what we does, we write all the code in a separate line like this. So now we can read it better. And to add a new style, we'll write here text align and then we'll write center and then we'll close this. And we'll save the page and now if I refresh the page you can see line is still there because I have done a mistake here because I have written here C-E-N-T-R-E -E, but it is C-E-N-T-E-R so take care of these kind of small mistakes now if I refresh you can see the heading is in the middle and now I want the second heading to go to the center so we can write a style for S2 tags and just for the people who want some lingo this first part is called CS property and this right part is called value so on left side you give the color property on the right side you give the green value and then multiple CSS properties are there I will write a screenshot here of very common properties and also in description of this video you can find a link to a nice video or a web page where you can understand more about more CSS properties and the values let's move forward to another interesting example so you can see here this is s2 tag on the right it's written here if I want to move this tag also in the middle so what we'll do, same, we'll write H2 and then curly braces to make it more visual, we'll move it like this. And now we'll write text align colon center and then colon and again we'll save it. Guys, make sure you save the page after making every change and then we'll refresh it. You can see it goes in the middle. And now you must be thinking, I just repeated myself. I already explained you this, how to center a heading or any HTML element. There is a purpose behind it. Okay. So what happened? Sometimes what we can do, instead of writing this code two times, we can write it one time. So for example, I will take text align center and I'll write it here, see this property. And I want this to be applied for both tags, H1 and H2, like here on this one and this one but just I want to write it one time. So let's do one thing. Let's remove this with a center line here and let's remove this also here. Okay. And I save this page and then I refresh this page. You can see they're back to the left and this CSS code is not addressing anybody because we have not defined which HTML element this CSS property should address or should target. So what we can do here, we should add something common in both this heading. And here comes the class and IDs. We can write a class attribute here. So we can write class 
equals and then small quotes and here we can give it name for example we say middle text and then we can copy this and we can add the same thing to the h2 headings also so this class attribute and this is the value of it so now what we need to do is we just need to copy this here paste it here and then curly braces start and end and now if i save the page and then refresh you can see it is still not moved still on left it is not taking effect here why it is important to understand whenever you want to address a class you cannot address a class like this you can address the basic elements just simply writing the name but to address a class you need to add a dot here before the class name once you save the page now if you refresh you can see you can see this move to the middle of the page similar like class attribute you have one more attribute which is called id and then you can give some id you can say big heading and then we can just copy it and we can add it here easy we give the same class and same id to both the headings but id is unique you cannot give the same id to different elements on a single page you can give the same class to two different elements on the page but not the id so we have to give it another id here we have to change it we can say it small heading id cannot be same for two elements but class can be same for two elements what we understand from this the class we use to join the elements or to apply the same rule to multiple elements but we use id to differentiate the elements styles let's remove this code here to easily understand things so now if i add color green here and if i refresh the page you can see the both heading are green but i don't want the second heading to be green but i want this both stay in the center but first should be red and second should be green but you can see they have similar class so this both properties will apply to both the headings so what we can do we can use id and to address the id we write hash and then we use which id we have to target for example let's take small heading and then i target this i paste this and now if i want to write a rule for example i want to write color red now if i press the page you can see second heading is red now it's only applied to this id don't worry too much about id and classes i just want to do the overview how they works because they are really really important let's clean this and make it a little bit simpler i'll change it to like small caps so it's easy to read i'm sure you understand how css works now let's go to javascript so now you can see we have added the html elements here and we have added css class so you have knowledge about css and html what about javascript so javascript we use to make things move around on the page or make page more interactive so we can also write inline javascript for example if i want to make a pop up appear when somebody click on this button so what i need to do here is i'll give a space and then i'll add on click equals and then there is single quote and then i can write alert then then round brackets and then again i'll write double quotes usually in coding if the outer part is single quotes you add the double quotes inside if the outer part is double quotes for example this one and this one you should write single quotes inside so just so keep those different to make the code work properly and then we can write button is clicked and then we can save this page now if i refresh this page if i click on click me you can see button i was clicked okay i did a mistake here it's a typo button is clicked okay i save it so this is how you write inline javascript but like css it is not advised to write inline so what we can do we can remove it from here and then after css we can write a javascript tag and javascript tag is written as script start and then we will end the script tag so we need to create a alert box so we can write here alert and then we can just write single quotes here and then button is clicked and guys make sure when you write javascript code you end it with a colon and then we save it and you can see if i refresh the page we see this alert even without clicking on the button if i refresh the page i see this alert even without clicking on the button actually what is happening when you have a javascript document you have multiple code inside it the browser start processing the code from top to bottom for example first browser will paint this text then this text then this text then this button then this image and then 
browser will take instruction from the CSS and then from the JavaScript. But here you can see we just write alert buttons clicked. We have not attached this alert to this button because remember previously we have written here on click alert buttons clicked. That's why when clicking on then only the pop-up was appearing. But now we have moved here but we have not attached it. It's just a statement to create a pop-up. So for now we'll remove this and now we'll attach this alert to this button. But JavaScript is a little bit different. It's not super simple like CSS and HTML but it is not that difficult too. So first of all what we need to do is we need to target this button and we can target this button by defining a constant. Don't worry it's not very complicated you can just write here const and then btn and then equal and now in JavaScript to select this button what we can do we can use this instruction which is document dot query selector button. So what it will do it will select this button directly. Basically it will select any button on the page. But this is a basic tutorial we are trying to understand how JavaScript works. So it's totally fine to use this instruction here. So what we have done. So we have called this button and now we have alert box. We just need to combine alert box with this button which we have saved in a constant. So what we can do to do that we can write btn dot and then we can write equal and then what function we want to do. So our function is to alert this button we we'll write inside this a function and then basis start and close and then we have curly basis start and when curly basis start you can give the instruction and then we end the curly basis. So what we are doing now first we are getting the button by this JavaScript command and now on click of this button we make this function alert button is clicked and now what we can do we can save this page if I refresh the page then I click on click me you can see the button is clicked. So JavaScript makes page more interactive and guys there are multiple JavaScript function slowly by slowly when you improve learning JavaScript you will know all this function like always I will add a nice video in the description of this video if you want to learn more about JavaScript and if you're still watching this tutorial you're learning something from it I will highly recommend to like the video and subscribe to the channel I will really appreciate that and please share this video with your classmate your colleagues or your family members who want to learn HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Before we move to the last things I will congratulate that you have successfully learned about HTML and then CSS and then JavaScript. And even if you understand 10% whatever I explained in this tutorial please re-watch this video again I'm sure you learn a lot and you'll be really confident to work with HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And more help about these things are in description of this video. Okay let's do one last thing to make you a pro beginner in HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Let's organize this because all this is very messy. You can see all the code is here. So to organize this what we can do. Let's open one more notepad. Okay this is another notepad I open here. The first thing is doc type. Before writing code you should write this tag here. Doc type HTML which explains browser that this is HTML. Don't worry too much about it. Just write it. The second thing you need to write here because all this code can run inside HTML. We need to write the HTML tag. Yes guys, HTML also got a HTML tag and all this goes inside the HTML tag. And just to make things simpler, we're gonna make some gap here. And then there's a head tag here, which we write with head start and then head end. We never forget to close the HTML tags. And also to make it clear, we'll just give it a little bit gap. Just to make things more readable, we can just move it on the right side. So we can see this is the most outer tags HTML start HTML end and this is one inner tag and then we also have a body tag which is a start body start and then body end. Let's make a little bit of gap and we can also write some code inside here and you can see this is the first level and we are adding this tag inside this tag and this is called nesting of tags. So adding one tag inside a tag is called nesting. Okay, now what goes inside head, what goes inside body. So in head tag we write those things which are instruction for browser only. We don't want that things to be seen by users. And those things are this trial instructions and this JavaScript instructions. So what we can do, we can copy these things here and we can write it inside the header. And inside body what we want to add, I want to add the, I want to add all the HTML code. So inside body I will add the HTML code. 
and just if you want you can just move on the right side it's complicated with the text editor but you can move everything to right to make this more easy there are some text editors where you can really easily move them inside those editors but i just want to show you what is the right way and make things easier to see because this is extreme beginner video so i'm using the notepad otherwise it's not that hard to move things inside the code you can select everything and just move them all to the right side Okay, I did it. We define doc type HTML, then we write HTML tag start and ends, and everything else goes inside. And then we have head tag, start, head tag end, and everything, all the CSS code, all the JavaScript code, which we don't want user to see, or which is the instruction only for the web browser goes inside the head. And inside the body tag, we can write all our text, content, our images, everything else goes inside the body tag. One more important thing in head tag, we can always use title here. So for example, I can write title, start and then I say HTML tutorial and then we can end this title. And let's do one thing, let's copy all this code and then replace this code inside here and we add all this code here. So we do not need this file, this code is perfect now. We can save this code and you can see here right now here, it's the name of the file. But since we've added the title tag here, Let's move this to the right side, so it's easier to read. Now we have given this title HTML tutorial. Now if I refresh the page, you can see everything is same, but here we have the page title HTML tutorial, which is here. And guys, congratulations, you have really learned a lot of things. This is just one last thing I want to make you guys learn is organization of HTML CSS files. You can see we defined different places for HTML in body and CSS and JavaScript inside head tag. We can even make it more simpler. For example, we can create separate files for style and JavaScript. Let's take all the CSS code from here and we cut it from here. And we save this file and we create a new file and we add all the code here. And then we can save this file and we can say index.css and we'll save this file. And you can see this file is here on my desktop. Now if I go back here because I removed the CSS, and if I save the page and now refresh the page, you can see all the CSS is gone because we have added this in a different file. So what we can do, we can add this file reference here and same thing we'll do with JavaScript. So what we'll do, so we'll cut all this code from here and then we will create a new file and we'll add all the code here. Save this file as index.js. JS is the extension for JavaScript files and I'll save this. And you can see this JavaScript file here on my desktop. So now to include a CSS file, we can use link. We can write link and then href and then single quotes and we close it. And then here we will write the path of this file. So because they both are on my desktop, so I can just write here index.css. One more important thing, when you add CSS and JavaScript to the individual files, you do not need this style text. So make sure you remove this text because we know this file is a CSS file. And then I save this file. And to tell browser that this is a style file, we need to add rel equal to style sheet. And now we save this. Now if I refresh, you can see the CSS is back. So just by adding this, we organize this stuff. We have CSS in, in a different file and then style is applied on the page. Same thing we can do with index.js. Make sure to remove this from here and from here. To include JS, we can go back to HTML. And instead of link, we need to write script and then src, which is source, equal single quotes, and the URL of the JavaScript file. So in our case, it's gonna be index.js. And then we will and we'll end this tag. And whenever you include script, we need to close also the script tag. And then we we'll close this like this. And if you see, if I click here on click me, it is not working. Why it is not working? This is something important in HTML because I told you the code flows in browser from top to bottom. So what is happening here? We have this JavaScript code here, which is defined first. And in this code, we are saying here inside here that we want to target the button, but the button is defined later on the page. And this code is added before the page. It is very common mistake with all the beginners. So if we just move this code from here, we copy this code 
and we'll add this after body and then we save the page and now I refresh the page then I click on click me you can see the code is working here I hope you learn the basics of HTML CSS and JavaScript from this video and please comment on the video I answer to all the comments on the channel if you have any questions any query and let me in comments if you want me to cover any more topics I'll really happy to do that and like always don't forget to like the video subscribe the channel I'll really appreciate that and please share this video with your friends, family, or colleagues who want to learn HTML, JavaScript, and CSS.